So I'll be presenting the work of an exceptional group of individuals in the Upcycle team. This is the waste hierarchy under which we currently operate, and it's predicated on assumptions that waste is an inevitability. The fact is that it, this approach seeks to maximize reduction, reuse, recycling, and recovery of waste materials. In the end, we still end up with disposals occurring in the landfill. This is evidenced by our linear manufacturing process, where we mine raw materials and we manufacture and make products and we deliver them to end users, con consumers. Through this linear process, we create industrial waste and consumer waste. Nature, though, does not make waste. Bionutrients are consumed, converted, and reused in a closed loop cycle, essentially upcycling everything. The upcycle team is committed to recreating nature's closed loop cycle in industrial and consumer communities. To this end, we have created three synergistic solutions. Freedom, a distributed manufacturing initiative that uses bioplastics made from local waste materials. Biomine, a bioremediation solution for the reclamation of metals from e-waste. And i2cycle, an industrial waste and consumer identification and matchmaking platform. Starting with freedom, we'll address waste challenges in the developing world. In Joya, India, an agricultural community, farmers rely very heavily on their agricultural equipment. A breakdown in a part can result, can, be, can require a four-hour trip by train to New Delhi, where you may or may not find the part in stock. Freedom's solution is to foster localized additive manufacturing capabilities within a closed-loop system. Broken parts can be imaged using camera phones that are prevalent. These images can be uploaded to services that will identify parts against the catalog and automatically submit them for 3D printing at local facilities. They can be delivered, they can be made with bioplastics, and they can be delivered back to the farmer or be made right there in the village. This approach fundamentally leverages current 3D printing technologies and bioplastics. This is also a significant shift from centralized manufacturing where goods spend 90% of their lifetime in distribution. It's a shift towards local distributed manufacturing. Freedom is being set up as a social enterprise and the team behind Freedom has, is passionately committed to making this happen. Biomine also focuses on solutions for developing countries. We're all familiar with Moore's law. Computers are getting better and cheaper at an accelerated rate. But what happens at the end of their life? In the town of Guiyu, China, 100 containers of computer parts are delivered each day. Globally, that's 50 million tons per year. These communities, their economies, are built around scavenging through e-waste. The principal workers are 11 to 18-year-old women and the elderly. The result is huge toxic exposure. A, a village 30 kilometers away, compared to a village 30 kilometers away in Guiyu, lead levels have been found to be 381 times higher. Copper levels, 115 times higher. The highest level of dioxins in the world are found in this town. This is happening in Bangalore, this is happening in Accra, and we continue to mine copper and throw it away in our e-waste. We can't continue to work, the, work things the way we have been. Things are changing, but disruptive, transformative change is needed. Biomine will seek to use microbes for bioextraction of metals from e-waste. This is accomplished by using bisorbents that can be mixed with the metals. They'll absorb, they'll absorb, the bacteria will consume them, and the metals can be extracted. This technology already exists. The largest copper mine in the world uses this technology. What we're, what we're proposing is a novel application, taking this from mining and applying it to e-waste to recover copper. There's a number of organisms that have already been identified that can remediate metals from the environment. And using Biomine's approach, we can recover metals valued at $1,200 per ton just from TVs, $4,000 per ton from PCBs, $15,000 per ton from cell phones. So our question to you is, are we going to let this girls in Guiyu sit on a pile of toxic e-waste, or are we going to create a $4 billion Biomine? The Biomine team is committed to addressing this challenge. And so far, I've talked to you about upcycle solutions to that are addressing challenges in India and China. Now, I'm wanna now I want to talk with you about solutions we can implement here in Silicon Valley that by creating closed-loop economies and cycles. Industrial waste 
is 97% of the waste that's generated in the United States. I2Cycle focuses on innovating industrial cycles to develop global industrial ecosystems. This is done with three core services. First, we're creating transparency on a local level, allowing industrial ecologies to develop. One manufacturer's trash is another manufacturer's treasure. Second, we're compiling a database of existing treatment solutions. Options, we're giving options to the industry of what's currently available. And third, we're providing access to novel and emerging technologies and solutions that offer real-world applications and which are scalable. The linear manufacturing process, which is destructive, we want to replace that with a cyclical process, connecting one manufacturer's raw waste material as raw material for the next manufacturer. We want to leverage exponentially advancing technologies to address those waste streams that need to be remediated by identifying these technologies and closing the loop. The I2 cycle team has already identified opportunities for this, these specific manufacturers and is exploring strategic partnerships. This summarizes the three synergistic approaches that we've identified, but we're not the only ones who think that this is a grand challenge. I think the most amazing thing about our economy is how wasteful we are because we don't value any of the waste, whereas we know they have incredible value. Closing that cycle is such a natural way to improve our economic and our environmental system that I'm sort of amazed we haven't gotten to it till now. That means there's incredible opportunity if we do take this seriously. Our design challenge really is to impact a billion people over 10 years. But the upcycle team really feels and believes that our design challenge is to impact the 10 billion people that will be here by 2050. Thank you.